all aboard and welcome to the next edition of Tablet to Table's enhanced e-publication series. We're on Puffing Billy, a century-old steam train that runs through the Dandenong Ranges on the outskirts of Melbourne, Australia. Puffing Billy offers passengers an historic train ride experience, as well as the dining options here in the first-class dining carriages, which makes it the perfect place to introduce issue six of Tablet to Table, where we uncover some interesting transit menus from the past. With images, video interviews, and a feature article by Canadian food professional, Wendy Blackwood, we look at menu designs from over the last 100 years or so, designed for transport that mainly floats or rolls. Also, Chef Melissa Bisco shares her insights as a menu creator for today's discerning diners. Embedded into the pages of this issue is an audio interview with our feature writer, Wendy Blackwood. She shares her passion and knowledge for the heyday of transit dining on the Canadian Pacific Railway. The head of passenger services, a man named H.W. Cooper, created a handbook which he referred to as, quote, the brains of cooks systematized. Isn't that great? It contained recipes, portion guidelines, sliding price scales, service protocols, and more for all the dishes served. And he also used the menus to address customers directly. For example, during the war, he informed passengers that, quote, in the interest of food conservation, veal, little chickens, young lambs, little pigs, and their byproducts are not used in the Canadian Pacific Service, end quote. Melissa Bisco is no stranger to the commercial kitchen. Working as the executive chef for the Publican Group provides her with the unique challenge of menu creation for more than a dozen restaurants around Australia. We join her at Mr. Mason in Melbourne, where she takes us through the finer points of how, why, and what goes on a menu. Menus in the 80s, menus were written, served with, drizzled with, and lots of lingo, and it would be, say, a paragraph. But now, it becomes descriptive, so it's, it's lists of words. So say cauliflower, you'll let, it'll just say the word cauliflower. So cauliflower could mean anything. So in the kitchen, it's still cauliflower, but if it could be a puree or it could be roasted, it could be anything. For more information on this and other issues, visit tablettotable.net. From us and Puffing Billy, may good times prevail.